Hello, my name is Rickard, and in this tutorial, I'm going to give you an overview of the blending modes in Photoshop and how you can use them creatively in your projects. This video is a part of my Photoshop Essentials series and the first module of my new course where we build this composite from scratch using Photoshop's latest tools. The course is now live and you can find a link to it in the description below. Now let's dive into blending modes and see how they can transform your work. Okay, let's go ahead and close this layer sample. I'm going to not save. And let's go to File, Open, and open up this blend sample. And what I want to do in this tutorial is just cover some basics of blending modes inside of Photoshop. Blending modes gives you a lot of creative ability to blend more than one layer together. So here I want to turn on this color sample layer. And if you remember from the last lesson to do that, I'm going to click on this little eyeball here. Okay, with this layer turned on, and what we have here is we've got a black dot, a red, green, and blue dot, and then a white dot. In here, we have a gradient that goes from black to white. And then in the middle here, we have a, um, a ball that's 50% gray. And then here we have kind of a, a color gradient. So here, if I go to my layer, these are all my blending modes. And normal is your default. And that just puts your layer on top. Whatever color it is, is is what it's showing. Um, you can have transparency on normal. So for example, if I added a mask and went to my gradient tool here, I'm going to change this from classic gradients to gradient. And then here under basic went from this foreground to transparent, which is the middle one, just added a gradient like this. You can see that I now have a gradient of transparency because of my mask. Even though this blend mode is still normal. So blend mode, the normal blend mode just puts your pixels on top, but it also does factor in either a mask or the opacity. I'm going to go ahead and delete this layer mask. You can see if I, reduce the opacity. It's just making that more transparent. Okay, next blend mode is dissolve. And this primarily has to do with how it treats the transparency. It basically everything is either fully transparent or not transparent at all. So in this case, if I did have a mask with a gradient on here, you can see that the way it's handling the transparency is it's making larger and larger holes of non-transparent to smaller and smaller holes of non-transparent. So that's what Dissolve does. Let's go ahead and delete this layer mask again. And next is Darken. And what you can see is Darken leaves anything that is darker and makes everything that's lighter disappear. So you can see that our white disappears entirely, but all the other colors where they are darker, they do show up. Next is Multiply. And Multiply basically if you can imagine your color being printed on a transparent sheet and you put that on top of your image, that's what Multiply does. Multiply is one of the most um, used blending modes along with screen and overlay. And basically, if you want to get rid of white in your layer, Multiply is the blending mode you want to use. All right, then we have Color Burn, similar to Multiply, but you can see it's burning that color. Linear burn, again, similar, but slightly different. Same with dark and color. Lighten, uh, similar to darken, but reversed. And then screen, basically everything that's black will disappear and everything else will be screened on top. You can almost imagine this as your image being 
projected onto another image. So if you had a projector and your screen had an image already printed on it, that's what screen is going to do. And you have uh, variations of that here. Next, we have overlay. An overlay is almost a mix of multiply and screen. So your lighter colors are going to be made lighter. Your darker colors are going to be made darker. And anything that's gray, 50% gray, is not going to be affected at all. So if I turn this on and off, you can see that my gray middle here is not affecting the background image at all. All right, then you have iterations or variations on overlay. And you can kind of see these lines here between the groups of blending modes. So all the ones here are variations on multiply. All these are variations on screen. All these are variations on overlay. These are your process blend modes. So these um, create basically a process. So like difference shows you the difference between your two layers. Exclusion does a similar thing. You can see that's kind of creating a negative effect. Subtract again. These are all process. You're hardly ever going to use these. They're very um, advanced kind of uses for them. And then these last four all relate to color. So hue, you can see that's changing the color of the layer below. Saturation is how much color. Color is color, as you can, uh, as the name implies. And then luminosity affects the brightness or darkness without changing the color. So those are all your blend modes. The most important ones that you're going to be using 90% of the time are normal, multiply, screen, overlay. Soft light is kind of a lighter or more subtle version of overlay. So between overlay and soft light, those are the two you're going to use the most in this category. And then potentially color. So I would say those blend modes, multiply, screen, overlay, soft light, and color, you're going to use 99% of the time. And then the other ones you might use 1% or 2% of the time. And for very particular use cases. So those are your blend modes. And just so that you can see how you might use these creatively. So here we have a vignette. And for the vignette, I want these parts to be made lighter and then these parts to be made darker. So what would be the blend mode? Well, we're going to use overlay. And if I turn this on and off, you can see that the overlay is kind of creating a vignette effect. All right, next we have this one. And here I want the white to disappear and I just want my black. So the blend mode for that is multiply. And then this one here, I want the sun ray, basically everything that's not black, to stay, but I want all the black to disappear. So for that, I'm going to use screen. And there you can see how these three layers, using different blend modes, are creating a new interesting image on top of this existing background. Let's go ahead and turn those off. The last thing I want to show you is let's turn on this forest background and let's turn on this image of a couple shot against a white background. Now, if I change the blend mode here to screen, my white is going to stay, all my black is going to go, and immediately I have a really cool double exposure. And I can change my background here to something else and still have that cool double exposure effect. So there you can see how blend modes give you the ability to blend images in interesting ways and have various creative outcomes. So there you have it. That is an overview of blending modes in Photoshop and also how you can use them creatively in your projects. In our next tutorial, I'll be showing you the essential shortcuts 
that will speed up your workflow and make Photoshop even more powerful. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications, like and share this video, and leave a comment. Here are some other tutorials to check out, and I will see you next time.